Repeat is a construct that basically initiates an infinite loop. Um, this is not a what I would characterize as a commonly used uh, control structure in R, but it does have the, its use occasionally. Um, so the only way to exit a repeat loop is to call break. So obviously you're going to have to call break at some point unless you feel like running your program you know, forever. Um, so here is a pretty simple example. Here I'm initializing at a value of x0 to be 1, and I'm setting what's called what I think of as a tolerance to be 10 to the minus 8. And then I'm going to repeat the following structure. Basically, I'm going to imagine that there's some function that computes an estimate uh, for x, um, and then I'm going to call that x1. And basically, if if the new value of x uh, that is x1 is di is l if the absolute value of the difference between x1 and x0 is less than some tolerance, so in this case 10 to the minus 8, then I'm going to stop the loop and then move on to the next bit of code. If if the if the difference is greater than my tolerance, then I set x0 to be equal to the new value, and then I and I run the loop again. I calculate a new estimate, and I check to see if, if the difference is small. So this is a common type of formulation in uh, in many types of optimization algorithms. For example, if you're trying to find the solution to some set of equations, or you're trying to maximize a function, often you'll iterate over and over again, and uh, and you'll stop when the when the estimates that you're calculating are getting closer and closer together because that's usually a sign that you're kind of converging to whatever the minimum or, ma or maximum of the objective function is. Uh, so this seem, in theory this is a perfectly reasonable uh, construction. You want to keep recycling through the algorithm until the two values are close. Uh, so there's one problem which is that first of all it requires an algorithm that is guaranteed to converge uh, and not necessarily every algorithm has that property. Um, second of all, also, it, do, it, it does depend a little bit on the tolerance, so the, the loop will run longer if the tolerance is smaller, generally speaking. Uh, and because it's hard to predict how, um, how long this loop will run, um, it can be a little bit dangerous because it's a little bit it, because it's unpredictable. You, you, it could theoretically run forever, and you have no way to guarantee that the program will stop at some point. Uh, so this construct, although it's theoretically kind of the right thing to do, um, it's usually not a good idea. It's better probably better off to use a for loop that has a has a hard limit on the number of iterations that. Um, it's allowed to run. That way, if you have a problem with your algorithm, it will eventually reach the hard limit and stop. Um, and uh, and you'll know that the reason it stopped is because it didn't converge. And then maybe you can try to fix something about the algorithm. Uh, with the repeat type of approach, um, if your algorithm is not converging, you won't have any warning. It'll just be running a really long time. The last control structure element I want to talk about is next. Uh, and then there's also return. So next is basically used in any type of looping construct uh, when you want to skip an iteration. So here I've got a basic for loop, which is going to run for 100 iterations. Um, and then, uh, But the idea is that I want to skip the first 20 iterations and then only kind of execute some code when it's when it, uh, for iterations 21 through 100. So here I've got a basic, I've got a very simple if condition. So if i is less than or equal to 20, uh, I'm just going to skip. So I, hit, I use the next. Uh, uh, expression and it'll it'll skip everything else in the in the for loop and go and iterate again. So once i um, is gets beyond 20, uh, then of course the expression i less less than or equal to 20 will be false, and so it won't execute the next. It'll go into whatever the body of the code for the for loop is. Um, so so next is another is a way to skip um, an iteration in a, in a loop, and of course break is a way to execute the, the exit the loop uh, entirely. Uh, the return function is an, is is another a function that can use to be ex exit a loop, and it's primarily used to exit a function. So it'll it'll exit the entire function um, and return a value uh, that you pass it. So we'll talk more about return when we talk about functions, um, uh, but it's something that can break that it can interrupt the flow of a program too. So. That's control structures for now. Uh, so the basic summary is that control structures like if, while, and for that can allow you to control the flow of an R, of an R program. Uh, generally speaking, while there are construct constructs that kind of allow you to execute infinite loops, uh, you generally want to be on the lookout for these kinds of things and to avoid them if possible, even if they are kind of theoretically correct, uh, because they can lead to kind of some unpredictable behavior in programs. Um, and the other key thing I haven't mentioned yet is that control the control structures that I've mentioned here are primarily useful for writing programs. I think I mentioned that in the beginning. But uh, for command line and interactive work, there are other types of uh, looping type functions that we can use. They generally have the word apply in them. Uh, and they can be a lot more useful for um, for command line interactive work when you're exploring data and things like that, not writing programs. Although they can be very useful in writing programs too. So I'll talk about the apply functions uh, in a separate set of videos.